Be Quiet's Pure Loop 2 FX 360 is an ARGB closed loop AIO that is competitively priced with other 360mm AIOs at around $155. But is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I test and review PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and graphics cards. Now before I got into the overview, to have full disclosure, Be Quiet did send me this cooler to test and review, but as always, all opinions expressed in my videos are mine and mine alone. So if you do end up liking the video, please hit that like button, and if you really like the video, how about subscribing to the channel, because it apparently helps a lot. So YouTube keeps telling me. Now for that overview. Be Quiet has two lines of AIOs, the Pure Loops 2 and the Pure Loops 2 FX, with the main difference between them being the fans. The Pure Loops 2 comes with Pure Wings 3 high speed fans, and the FX comes with the Light Wings high speed fans, which do have a higher max rated RPM. Next, let's go over what you get in the Pure Loops 2 FX 360 box. There is the AIO and fans, of course. A box filled with the mounting hardware, which is all separated out into little baggies. So you get lots and lots of little plastic bags. There is a small tube of thermal compound, a 100 milliliter bottle of clear coolant, a well illustrated manual, and there is also an ARGB fan hub that is powered by SATA. The fan hub has two leads, a four pin PWM fan connector and a three pin ARGB 5050 connector. These are to plug into the motherboard so that you can control the ARGB LEDs using the motherboard's manufacturer software. And you can control the speed of the fans by using a program like Fan Control or the motherboard's UEFI. Looking at the radiator, it is aluminum with an FPI of 21. FPI is fins per inch. The tubing is rubber with a nylon cover and is a pretty typical length at 400 millimeters. The pump is not inside the block, it is actually in or on the tubing. The pump has a 4-pin PWM connector and has a max rated RPM of 5500. The block has a plastic cap, there are 5 volt ARGB LEDs under this cap. The cold plate of the block is copper with a nickel plating. Moving on to the fans, so you get 3 fans. These are Be Quiet Light Wings high speed fans, so they do have ARGB LEDs with a three pin ARGB 5050 connector. They also have a four pin PWM connector. There are nine blades on the fan. They have rubber pads on each of the corners and the light wings high speed do have a max rated RPM of 2,500. If you do want to learn more about these fans, I did do a fan review on them. So I will have that linked down in the description. The dimensions of the radiator with the fans attached is 397 millimeters long by 120 millimeters wide by 52 millimeters deep. And that brings us to the socket compatibility. The Pure Loops 2 is compatible with most Intel mainstream sockets. It is also compatible with 2066 and 2011 V3 of Intel's HPC sockets. For AMD, it's compatible with AM4 and AM5. Okay, moving on to how to install the CPU cooler. I will be installing it onto an AM4 motherboard. The installation between AMD and Intel sockets is pretty similar, but if you are installing this onto an Intel socket, please check the installation guide just to make sure that you're doing it correctly. As always, before you start, have a flat, clean, and sturdy surface. You should also have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat. You will also need a PH2 screwdriver, and you should also have some isopropyl alcohol and something to wipe with. Plus, if you are installing this onto an AM4 or AM5 motherboard, you will need the backplate that came with your motherboard. With the backplate flat on the mat and the CPU installed into the motherboard, align the holes on the motherboard to the standoffs on the backplate. Then with the motherboard flat, place the AMD plastic spacers over the standoffs on the backplate. Then find the AMD mounting bars and the AMD mounting screws. Placing the mounting screws through the holes on the mounting bars then align the mounting screws with the plastic spacers, making sure that the mounting bars are facing in. Once you have, screw the mounting screws into the holes on the backplate. Once that's all done, you'll need to install the motherboard into your case. 
Next up is installing the fans and radiator onto the chassis. I recommend installing the radiator along the top of the case with the fans on top orientated as exhaust. But if you do want to install the radiator at the front of the case, you will want to install the radiator with the tubing at the bottom. I understand this isn't always necessarily possible, but because of where the pump is located, it is certainly recommended, if not actually a requirement for this AIO. Once the radiator and motherboard are installed in the case, it's time to clean off the CPU with some isopropyl alcohol and apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. Now, making sure to remove the sticker from the bottom of the cold plate, place the block cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the screw holes on the block to the threads on the mounting bars. Now, using your PH2 screwdriver, screw in the two screws on the block to the mounting bars. Once that's done, we'll need to plug all the cables in. I'll start with the pump. This cable should be plugged in to the pump header on your motherboard if your motherboard has one. If your motherboard doesn't have a pump header, it can be plugged into a standard fan header. Next, I'll plug the fans into the hub. So that is both the four pin PWM connectors and the three pin ARGB 5050 connectors. If your motherboard only has one three pin five volt ARGB header, you will also need to plug in the three pin ARGB 5050 connector from the block into the hub. With that all done, you'll need to provide SATA power to the hub. If you don't, the RGB LEDs and the fans will not work. Finally, we'll take the two leads from the hub. So the four pin PWM connector and the three pin RGB 5050 connector and plug them into the motherboard. I'll plug the fan header into the CPU header on my motherboard and the RGB header into five volt header that I have. And that's it, we're all done the installation. Next, I'll quickly be going over the RPM range and ARGB LEDs of the fans and block. But first, if you are appreciating all the work that I've done here, could you please consider supporting the channel by using my Amazon Associates links in the description? All you need to do is click on the link that suits your location and when you add an item or item to your cart and order them, the channel will get a small kickback at no added cost to you. Okay, starting with the RPM range of the fans, so this has the fans attached to the radiator and also plugged into and through the hub. So with the fans at 100% PWM, the motherboard is showing the RPM at 2450-ish. And that is giving this cooler a sound level of 40 dBA. Dropping the PWM down to 50%, the motherboard is now showing the RPM at 1420-ish. Dropping the PWM down to zero, the fans do stop spinning and the fans kick back on at 6% PWM. The motherboard isn't showing it, but the fans are spinning at 240-ish RPM. Now showing the RPM of the pump. So at 100% PWM, the pump's RPM is at around 5430-ish to 5500-ish. So that is a pretty large range, but because the RPM is so high, it does kind of fluctuate a fair bit. Percentage-wise, it's perfectly fine. Dropping the PWM down to 50, the motherboard is showing the RPM at 4780-ish. And dropping the PWM down to zero, the motherboard is now showing the RPM at 4100-ish. Moving on to the LEDs. I personally do like the dual ring look that these fans give. The LEDs are bright and the colors look pretty good in a medium lit room, or they do to me at least. Not really sure what else to say, so I'll be moving on to the temperature testing. If you haven't watched my CPU cooler testing methodology video, I strongly suggest you do. It's where I go over the how and what of my CPU cooler testing. I'll put a card above, and I will also have it linked down in the description. The Pure Loops 2 FX360 in my 35 dBA noise equalized 87 watt test matched the Phantom Spirit and the NHD15 with a CPU temperature of 70.9C. And something I've, I'll be starting to add to my CPU cooler testing is audio recordings of the 35 and full speed tests. So here's the 35 dBA noise recording. Then when I let the fans run at full speed, the average CPU temperature dropped to 70C, and that had the cooler sound level at 40 dBA. And here's the audio recording of the cooler at full speed. So 
So only a one Celsius difference between the 35 dBA and full speed tests. So yeah, not really much of a difference here, but at 87 watts, I wouldn't expect there'd be much of a difference. Now for a more realistic test for this cooler. So a 150 watt load with the cooler noise equalized to 35 dBA. The CPU's average steady state temperature was 75.7 C, which again has it matching the Phantom Spirit, or at least for the most part it is anyways. Then when I let the fans run at full speed, the average steady state CPU temperature dropped to 74.7 C. So again, a one Celsius difference or thereabouts. So not much of a difference between the 35 dBA and full speed tests, again, at 150 watts. So what do I think of Be Quiet's Pure Loops 2 FX360? Now I'm gonna try to keep this as simple as possible. It was matching the larger air coolers in my testing. This doesn't sound too bad until you start comparing the prices of those coolers to this AIO. The NHD15 is around 110 USD, so a $45 difference. And the Phantom Spirit is like 42 USD, so like 100, 110 USD less than the Pure Loops 2 FX360 is, which is a lot of money, which is a lot of money. Now, yes, if you do have a CPU that puts out 200 watts, the order of that stack is going to change most likely, but for most people, they don't have a CPU that can put out 200 plus watts or at least 200 watts stably. If some of you do have a CPU that can, how often are you? Because if your answer is a lot, then you are one of the people that should be looking at this cooler and everyone else should pretty much just be looking at a much less expensive air cooler and calling it a day. Now, please don't get me wrong. This is a good cooler and it definitely does perform quite well at lower DBA. It's just, it's a lot of money. So it only makes sense for the small percentage of people that really need a 360 AIO. And see how I said makes sense. If you do want to get a 360 AIO, get a 360 AIO. I'm, like you're an adult, I'm assuming. So you can do kind of whatever you want. It's just, you do have to understand that you're going to be paying a lot more money than you need to, to then cool your CPU. And I guess I'm just going to leave it at that because yeah. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you'd get notified whenever I drop a new video. There is the HFG Discord server. All you need to do is agree to the server rules and then you get to view all of my charts. A link is down in the description. There is also Patreon if you'd like to support the channel directly. Again, a link is in the description. Uh, you may want to check out this video here as well. It should be along the same lines as this video you just watched. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.